Good morning! This is actually take three on this. So, I believe that by now you should have passed your Friday folders to the left and done the Pledge of Allegiance. And now you should have your notebooks out and be ready to do mentally math. Let's get mental! So why don't you start out and get a few of these done ahead of me and I'll start in a moment. So yes, I am coming to you today as a disembodied voice. I have a little bit of family business to attend to and I uh, appreciate your patience with that. Okay, so we're gonna take a couple of deep breaths, listen to the birds for a minute and I'll get started. Okay, that should have given you a little bit of time. If I did not give you enough time, you can just pause the video. I'm going to get started. Okay, so we are combining a value of negative 6, and then we've got two negatives do make a positive, so we're combining that with a value of positive 24, getting us a value of positive 18, also known as 18. Then we are multiplying, or sorry, uh, dividing 10 by 100 right now. So that's two boingies, boingy, boingy. So we can think of that as one tenth. Oh, by the way, uh, the stylus is at the school, so I'm scribbling with my finger. So I hope you'll forgive me if we're a little scribbly today. Then here we have algebra. So we would subtract 6 from 78 to get 72, divided by 8 is a value of 9. And then here, we seem to be talking about a circle with a diameter of 10 feet, and we are getting the circumference, a little bit topical for our lesson today. and. So that's just a 3 and 14 hundredths times 10 feet. Then for measurement, uh, metric conversions, so elegant and simple. In this case, 100 centimeters to a meter, so this would be one and five tenths meters, also known as one and a half meters. And 24 is three fourths of in, so about one third of that would be eight times four would be 32. Then two adjoining angles that total 180 degrees would be supplementary angles. Supplementary. Okay, then 25% of 24, or one fourth of 24, be six times five is 30. Minus 2 is 28. Divided by 2 is 14. 
plus 1 is 15. Divided by 3 is 5. Times 7 is 35. Plus 1, 36. Square root of that is 6. And times 10 would get us 60. All right. Okay, so today we are talking about the area of a circle, and we have already gone over this rule when we were talking about the gentleman with his piano and the four legs and the piano coasters and how many uh, pounds per square inch, if you remember all of that, we discussed how this rule works. So the, the basic rule for getting the area of a circle would be the radius squared times pi. And that gets us a nice equal sign there because we we're just thinking of pi as a concept and the exact measurement of pi, whatever that is. But of course, that's three and 0.14 stretching out to infinity, so we typically don't, don't, uh, can't really use that to get any sort of uh, number we can use. So we uh, use three and fourteen hundredths, or twenty-two sevenths. And um, so let's talk a little bit about how this rule works. So it might help if we think of it as, so we're going to think like sort of there's an imaginary square and we have a circle inside of it and think that maybe that square is divided into quadrants and so we can think that if we were to get the area of one of those quadrants and multiply it by about three, we are getting the area of the circle. And so if we're wondering how does that work, think of it like if you were to take the area out of all of these corners of our theoretical square if we were to take all of that all of that out it would add up to about the area of one of the quadrants so that means Essentially, we could take one of these, multiply it by three, and that gets us about the area of the circle. So, following this rule, and they, they made this nice and simple for us by giving us 10 centimeters. So 10 centimeters, and of course we're squaring this, so 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters. And uh, sorry, I think I'm needing to rush at this point because we are on take three. So 10 times 10 is 100 and centimeter, unit of centimeters times unit of centimeters is centimeters squared. So now that we have that number, that measurement, excuse me, then in this case, we are using three and 14 hundredths, otherwise known as 3.14 for our value of pi, which is basically two boingies, boingy, boingy. And yes, 314 square centimeters, but of course we would need to say that the area 
is about, so wavy lines there, about 314 square centimeters. And you could say three and 14 hundredths meters, but that's not exactly what they seem to be asking here. So you wouldn't be wrong, but you wouldn't be exactly following following what they did, the answer that they seem to be trying to get here. Okay. So for 22 sevenths, we like to use, we like to use this when we are working with some sort of multiple of seven for, for our measurements, for cross cancelling goodness reasons. So taking, taking that measurement, we can say uh, the radius squared, so seven inches times, ooh, that's a terrible seven, seven inches, getting us 49 square inches for the caddy kind of area of our little sector over there. And then plugging this into our stage two. We could say 49 square inches times 22 sevenths. And of course, I like to put an imaginary but what is always the implied imaginary over one, just for, for clarity, for when we do our cross cancelly goodness, we can say seven times 22. So if you do all that out, that would, I believe, end up being 150. Four square inches, and also in this case, that would mean the area. Oh, excuse me, the area would be about. Wow, oh, those are terrible. Oh, there, the area would be about one hundred and fifty-four square inches. I'm a little crammed over there. Okay. And finally, just letting pi be pi, which is simple, but also usually fairly useless in a real world situation. Uh, in this case, they give us a diameter. So we need to make, we need to uh, use half of that for the radius. So six feet times our six feet is 36 square feet. And so multiplying that by exactly pi would get us exactly 36 times pi square feet which is exact, but also rather incomplete on your information, isn't it? All right, so there we go. Uh, please do your odds, and if you finish ahead, get onto Mathia. I know a couple of you might need to get onto Khan Academy, sorry about that. And uh, by the time you're done with that, I'll have a history video presentation up for you. And uh, if you have a little bit of extra time, you can get into groups and work on your science projects. Okay, so I'll probably see you about the time that PE would be going on. And uh, you have a great morning. Bye.